Hey everybody, it is Scott and Happy New Year. Uh, welcome to a uh, Voice of the Harbinger broadcast. I uh, have received a word for uh, 2023 that I'm going to be sharing uh, over probably six different um, videos. And uh, so this is the first one, uh, the word that I got for this year uh, was a new profile for a new season. And on uh, December the 6th, uh, I received a vision. I was ministering up in Illinois, and uh, after I was done with the three days of ministry there, I uh, was praying in the morning and uh, had a vision, which is uh, more rare for me. I don't really have many of those. I mostly have dreams. Um, but I had a vision, and uh, I will share that vision in the next video. Um, and then I will. It, it was followed by four dreams on uh, December the 15th, and the 16th and then two on December the 23rd and I believe they all tie together and support one another and they're all speaking prophetically of the uh, year and what um, God is getting ready to do and what's getting ready to take place in the earth what the devil's doing what's just happening uh, and uh, what our response should be and what we need to do to be ready for this year but I want to share with you just in this brief introductory video uh, I'm going to be sharing with you the scripture that the Lord gave me for this year and that scripture is found in 1st Thessalonians 5 verses 6 7 8 and 9 I'm going to read it to you out of two different translations and um, you know one uh, interesting thing before we go there is that normally when I receive dreams uh, for many years, I always received them around between three and four o'clock in the morning. Um, that vision I had was at seven in the morning, but that's different because I was awake. Uh, and that's usually when you have a vision when you're awake. Uh, but I was praying at that time. Um, but uh, the, um, the, the dreams that I had all happened more around five o'clock, which is an interesting thing because for those of you that um, are on the Zoom uh, meeting that we do on Thursday nights, uh, we've been talking about light. We've been talking about um, uh, the the um, twilight and the dawn, and how these things relate the night to the uh, twilight to the uh, to the dawn, and how they all relate to the um, return of Jesus. And uh, the interesting thing to me was that with the dreams moving to 5 a.m., is that there's a real uh, it made me think: is is it saying? that what we have happening is um, we're getting closer to that twilight, which I believe the twilight is the hour in which the church, uh, the, um, the new wineskin church age will take place, that it will be the church in glory that will begin to shine, shining uh, in reflection of Jesus who is to come, who is the dawn, and he will be coming um, after we shine in the twilight the dawn will occur in which jesus arises and we will see jesus uh, as he returns and we will be the glorious church that glorious remnant bride that he is coming for um, and uh, we will be um, prepared and ready for him and so here's the verses that i had this year and so the first two verses six and seven in first thessalonians five i want to read out of the new living translation and it goes like this it says so be on your guard and this is one of the biggest things that I felt this year was that there was an alarm in the spirit and that we were to be alert and sober. And so this verse, so be on your guard, not asleep like the others. Uh, he says, stay alert and clear headed. So it speaks of both the uh, necess necessity for soberness, spiritual soberness, uh, of being awake, being uh, prophetically uh, understanding of the times, uh, having prophetic insight into the times. And um, so he says, stay alert and clear headed, having our minds clear, having our minds uh, renewed, having eliminated things that um, distract, that defocus, that disrupt uh, our ability to stay the course. Uh, and in the midst of all that's going to be taking place, that we'll be readied for it. And so um, we see here, uh, he says, stay alert and be clear headed because night is the time when people sleep and drunkards get drunk. And so he's, he's relating to this idea of that there's a night and in the night, there it's when people drink and that's when people sleep and that's when people can miss what? 
the coming of the bridegroom for his bride because he always comes in the night. There's a video that we recently watched that I think it was called um, Before the Wrath. Excellent video. Talked about this whole idea throughout scripture of the idea of the wedding feast and uh, how Jesus is uh, preparing to come. And I believe this speaks of it even right here. He's saying for us to be, a, be, a, be on guard in the middle of the night because when the wedding feast occurred, it occurred uh, sometime in the night. Uh, and if you weren't ready, uh, when that door was opened for the feast, people rushed in and came in. And once they closed that door, you were not getting in. And so I believe that's what he's referring to here. He's saying we need to be alert. We need to be clear-headed. We need to be on guard because we don't want to be like those others who are asleep. You know, I believe there are many Christians who are asleep. I believe that the world is obviously, uh, uh, you know, just disassociated and detached. But we who are alive in Christ, we are the ones who must be clear-headed, must be sober, must be alert, must be on guard, must not be asleep or drunk, that is, intoxicated with things of the world. I believe as Jesus is getting closer, his true remnant people are going to be uh, separating more and more and more. And so then uh, the verse continues, and I'm going to read this last two verses for you out of the Passion Translation. Uh, and it says this, But since we belong to the day, since we belong to the day, or our offspring of the day, uh, some translations I think say, you know, that we are sons of the day, or daughters of the day, offspring of the day, offspring of the light, offspring uh, who have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear Son, Colossians 1:13. And so he says, but since we belong to the day. We don't belong to the night. We don't belong to be sleeping. We don't belong to be those who are drunk or intoxicated with this age. We must stay alert and clear-headed. I love that. Here we got the New Living Translation and the Passion Translation both saying the same words, that we need to be alert and clear-headed when it speaks of being sober uh, in like the King James, New King James, New American Standard. Uh, here it's alert and clear-headed. We need to be alert and, I, and I'm, I'm sensing that so strongly, the necessity for alertness. Be aware there are things coming, and so we need to be on guard. We need to be clear-headed and ready to face storm, to face tribulation, to face persecution, whatever might come in the coming year at hard economic times. Um, let us be ready, he says. But since we belong to the day, we must stay alert and clear-headed by placing the breastplate of faith and love over our hearts. So uh, much we could say about that, and I will be saying it because it ties into the dreams and the vision, uh, but, but uh, putting uh, the breastplate of faith and love over our hearts. Faith, faith in God, trust in God, believe in God, in his word, and what he's promised, and hanging on to those things that we know. And then here, him saying, and love knowing that God loves us. I mean, the whole revelation of love is that God loves us first. And the more that we grasp the amount of love that he has for us, the more we love ourselves, and the more we can love others. And so we need to have this upon us because there's going to be many uh, reasons for us to be offended and for us to be um, uh, angered. Um, and, uh, and love is the thing that helps us to be able to forgive, to be free from bitterness, and to uh, walk in, uh, uh, in, in forgiveness. And, um, uh, and love helps us to uh, overlook others uh, and, and, to, and to, to be those that are reaching for others, both the, the saved and the unsaved, and trying to bring them along with us on this journey uh, down this path as we're getting very close to the culmination of all things. And he goes on and he says, uh, not only over your hearts, that breastplate, but a helmet of the hope of salvation over our thoughts. And I like that instead of minds, our thoughts. Because sometimes I think with mind, we think brain. And I think thoughts is more specific to the thing that is occurring in our mind that can be influenced by the Spirit of God or influenced by other spirits because it's really partaking in the soul, not the physical brain, but in the, the, the mind and the thoughts of the soul, uh, not the spirit. We are a spirit being. We have a soul that consists of our mind, will, and emotions. And so that mind, those thoughts uh, that can be entangled with emotions, that, can be, um, that are definitely subject 
uh, the thoughts help to influence the will and our will must be strong and uh, submitted to the Spirit of God along with our emotions and our thoughts and so he says there in a helmet of the hope of salvation knowing that salvation belongs to us that redemption belongs to us that in in the midst of anything that can take place we have security in knowing that we have a hope or a confident expectation of salvation and this verse is really very similar to the verse that we read or that, we, that I had for last year which was 1 Peter 1 13 so you could always look that up and see that similarity uh, but the helmet uh, the hope of salvation over our thoughts for God has not destined us for wrath but he's destined us he says to possess salvation through our Lord Jesus the anointed one that we're to, to possess salvation and uh, uh, so um, that is the promise that's the hope that in in the midst of anything we always know that God is there for us I mean he fed Elijah by a raven he who brought him meat and ravens eat meat so it wasn't like he had a sparrow pick up the meat and bring it to him who eats seeds but he brought he had a raven who eats meat gather meat for him not eat the meat not consume the meat but bring the meat to him in the midst of famine and God provided him directed him to the brook Kareth wherein he found water to drink in the midst of that famine and so uh, that drought which which created a famine and uh, and he ate you know until the brook dried up and then God moved him to the widow of Zarephath but uh, God is going to take care of us we have this hope of salvation this hope of rescue this hope of provision this hope of protection this hope of uh, security in him salvation uh, let us let our minds be filled with the expectation that God is going to move that continue talking to him about that well it's about to rain I'm feeling raindrops on me right now so I've got to stop uh, and I will share the next one I will share the vision and then we will begin to expound on it as I share the four dreams that are associated with it uh, well, which will I believe will help to bring clarity uh, as to what God is speaking for this year 2023 I love you guys God bless you have an awesome year and uh, with great expectation of what God's getting ready to do in our lives. Talk to you soon. Bye.